One of the things I've been asked the most recently is what app I use to edit my videos on. I've tried and tested a lot of apps, but I've been using the same one since like, what, 2017? I use it for client vids, YouTube vids, one take episodes, as well as it being free. Let me show you why it's the best program in the game. So I'm going to show you guys the new stuff that they've added and the stuff I like about it, the stuff I might not like about it. So I've been using the software since maybe, what, DaVinci Resolve 16. So I thought, let's just go through this together. So I've got the site here on my laptop and I've got the updates right here. Alright, so um, they say DaVinci Resolve 19, professional editing, color effects and audio post. Um, features all new DaVinci Resolve, new Neural live TV production, AI vocals, tools, DaVinci Resolve, live timeline, timeline editing, editing, music, music remixing, dialogue separation, separation. Bro, that's a lot. You know what? Let me just show you, man. The cut tab is made for simple editing. If you do get ready with me, TikToks. Fun fact, I've never actually used this tab. I, I just don't see the need, especially when I show you the edit tab. The edit tab is like the main workhorse of the project. It's where I spend most of my time and it's where everything comes to life. I've picked up a couple things that help me cut up and finish the project quicker. I use the shortcut A a lot, especially when dragging things around in the timeline. I usually use B as a quick way to cut up clips. I use M to put down markers and place important notes. Option Y selects all clips forward. If you press Shift and C, you open up the timing controls. Essentially, where you're able to manipulate and control time. I prefer to use this whenever I want to change the speed in my videos. You can press R to open up the read time controls. But the best thing by far that they've added is adjustment layers. I usually like adding adjustment clips to change the crop, but I usually use them if I want to change the color. The color grading tab is where I try and tweak and perfect the colors of my videos. It's where I try and turn grey flat foot into polished and professional looking content by playing with sliders, wheels and curves till everything looks perfect. People either love the colour tab or they don't and it's mainly because of how complicated nodes are. Nodes are like the building blocks for adjusting videos. They let you organise and apply different effects in a structured way. You start with basic corrections like brightness and colour balance. I then add more nodes for specific tweaks and just to make it perfect. At the end I add a film emulation plugin. And the one I use is obviously the handsome. The reason why nodes are better than layers is nodes work without changing the original footage. So you can always go back and adjust them later. It's the best way to make your videos look just how you want them to. And there's a couple special features in the color tab that I like to use. Power grades. Your whole node setup can be saved and reused so you can get the same look across all your videos and make it look consistent if that's what you want to do. If there's a particular color grade from a film or YouTube video, all you need is a screenshot. And you can basically do something similar to tracing over pictures when you're drawing. You just copy and try and dial in a look similar to the one that you're seeing. The histograms, the vector scopes, and waveforms show all the information regarding the image that you're viewing. And when you dial in your look, you're ready to add some magic. The Fusion tab houses some of the most important tools you'll need to take your video to the next level. Alright guys, quick intermission. I just checked and 90% of you guys aren't subscribed. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon. We've got some crazy videos about to drop and I'd hate for you guys to miss out on them for real. And the most important is the masking tool. This is probably one of the most fundamental skills in editing and I'ma be honest, compared to the pro version, the masking in the free version does have its limits. But regardless, you can still use it to add source to your videos very very quickly. Another big time tool is the tracker. And this is crazy useful if you want to keep something specifically in the center of the frame or base stabilization around a specific object. And adding motion blur just accentuates any of the movements. So what, that's the cut, edit, fusion and cut color tab sounds good but now we actually have to make a sound good this is where i try and master the scene and set the mood in terms of sound there's a big collection of effects and being honest i've barely scraped the surface of music noise reduction is where i dial in and block out the noise i use this a lot for things like voiceover or whenever someone's talking just so you can hear every single thing that they're saying I use the built-in equalization. Two wings and chips and a key. What flavor? 
pineapple. When I'm done with sound, I'm ready to export. You can very easily apply different settings and presets depending on where your video is going to be viewed, which all contributes to how the video is going to look on different displays and different platforms. And then you click render and you let it do its thing. <laughs> 